the Nike Vaporfly Next Scent 2s and the Nike Zoom X Invincibles. So which one is going to take that top spot? Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be ranking my top 10 shoes from worst to best that I've used over the last 12 months. It's going to be a really interesting video. We've got a whole range of brands and a whole different shoe types. So it's not a case of the most expensive shoe comes first because actually that doesn't happen in this video. Um, so for example, the Alpha Fly 260 quid, it, spoiler alert, it doesn't come first. But um, yeah, that's what this whole video is about. So sit back, relax. And I'll take you through my top 10 shoes that I've used through 2021 through to 2022. So guys, in 10th and in final place of the 10 shoes that I've used over the last 12 months, it's the Hockamack 4. I picked this shoe up after some really high recommendations from some friends like Ben is running, the run testers, they seem to really love this shoe. But if I'm honest, I was really underwhelmed and it didn't perform how I wanted it to on the roads. And then I used it on the grass thinking I might have its kind of niche on the grass and I just couldn't get any grip either on the, on the wet kind of dewy grass either. So yeah, I was really disappointed. When I first put them on, they felt really light and I was really excited to see how these would kind of compare to other shoes on, on different surfaces. But they never seemed to give me any cushioning in, compared, in comparison to the other shoes that I've tried. And they just never seemed to live up to the hype for me anyway. So maybe I didn't give them enough chance, but I certainly haven't run as many miles in these as I wanted to. Um, and yeah, I think about 120, 130 pounds, I think... I think I wanted better, really, to be honest. So yeah, in 10th place is the Hockamack 4, and I'm going to give this an overall ranking of 6.2. So guys, in 9th place, just coming past the Hockamack 4, is the New Balance Rebel V2. So you guys that have been on this channel for a while will remember that I picked these up with a voucher I got for winning the Stafford Half Marathon. I also picked up my dad and my sister a pair as well. And when I would use this shoe on the treadmill and just walking around the shop, they felt really comfortable and I was kind of mind blown that these were kind of fairly cheap in, in terms of running shoes, £120. But I actually didn't think I ran in them enough to get a, enough of an understanding because now that I've used them for more runs, I actually don't like them as a running shoe. As a walking shoe, they're really comfortable, but I just don't find they've got enough to them as a running shoe. So when my dad does a London Marathon later in the year, I will uh, definitely be wearing these as kind of the walking shoe that I wear around about London because they're already comfortable. But I don't know, for a run, they didn't have the ankle support. They didn't have enough underneath the forefoot for me, really. Um, and I just found that they were kind of irritating my ankles. Like I always had achy ankles afterwards because they were kind of making them work, I guess. And they never had anything to them. There's no plate or anything in there. So, yeah, it's a really tricky one because obviously every shoe is uh, very personal to... Um, to the runner but i know my dad's had, had a similar thing where they're actually really comfortable for walking but not as comfortable for running but yeah so overall score out of 10 i've given this a 6.7 um but yeah wasn't really wasn't really what i wanted from this shoe if i'm honest so guys in eighth place and just pipping the new balance rebel v2 it's the night pegasus 37 i know we're on the 39th variation now the night pegasus 39 is now out i have been looking at it um, but if I'm honest, I've had a few pairs of the 37 and although they were good kind of daily trainers, I do think there is better ones out there. And especially when Nike keep bumping that price up by £5 every year at the moment, it seems. You'll see this one's um, had a bit of a custom design to it. So I managed to get these signed by some elite athletes at the night of the 10Ks, which was really cool. Like Chris Thompson, Jake Smith, Ben Connor, your man Cripper, that sort of thing. But yeah, so I use this shoe um, in some sessions on the track. And I actually think there is some pros to using a shoe like a... A Pegasus for all your track sessions because there isn't much to it um, and it's a fairly heavy shoe as shoes go then when you put some something like a next percent two on into a race it feels like a massive change but yeah for me I just found that there wasn't really much going on and especially for the sort of runs I wanted to use it for like easy runs and long runs they weren't really saving the legs as much as I like I prefer a soft shoe for those sorts of runs so I didn't really find a place in my rotation but as a shoe it's a comfortable, I use it for all of my gym sessions, not these ones anymore because I'm going to keep these nice and uh, nice and pristine with all the signatures on. Um, but yeah, so overall, just pipping the New Balance Rebel V2, I gave the shoe a 6.8 out of 10. Um, so yeah, nothing like crazy high, but it's also just kind of what you expect from a, a nice daily trainer. At £105, £110, pounds, it's, it's a decent investment, I think. Um, you can definitely go go more wrong, I think, so yeah. The Night Pegasus is 37. So guys, next up, coming in at 7th place, is the Sacconi Endorphin Speed 2. A shoe that I was actually quite kind of 
pleasantly surprised with. I use this for all of my grass sessions um, while it was in rotation anyway and during winter when the, the grass was a bit soft. I found that the grip was horrific on the roads if it was a little bit wet, but on the grass it actually kind of came into its own. It had like a, a decent grip and I didn't seem to slip too bad in them. But yeah, so I use this for all my sessions. I tried using it for some easy runs, it just didn't have enough for me. But I know that my sister absolutely loves this shoe. I think she uses it for sessions, easy runs, some races if um, she's not taking it too seriously. But yeah, so it was, a, it was a pleasant surprise, really nice light shoe. But again, it just kind of lacked that little something for me. Um, and I, I wanted to kind of not use a plate, if that makes sense. This has got a nylon plate in. And for me, I like to not use a plate or use a plate. So, um, yeah, it was just kind of in a bit of a, a, a weird grey area for me. So I have given this a 7.0 out of 10. I think it's a decent score and it's been a really good kind of, I think I've done 600 miles in this shoe, pretty much all on grass. And you can see like the wear is not too bad. Like I haven't, it doesn't look like I've done that much in them. Um, but to be fair, I don't typically wear through shoes that much. But yeah, I just found the shoe like a bit mediocre compared to something like the Zoom X. Um, the lacing always seemed to like kind of cut off the circulation in my, in my feet. Um, so the laces were a little bit annoying, but yeah, apart from that, it did some really good miles for me and I did most of my winter training in it. So I've got a lot to, lot to owe to this Sikonian Dolphin Speed 2, but unfortunately it only makes seventh place with 7.0 as a score out of 10. So guys, coming in at sixth place and just missing out on the top five is the On Cloud Monster. This is another reason why I completely disregard, um, other people's reviews when it comes to buying shoes is because... Um, a lot of YouTubers like Ben is running and, and other people said they absolutely love this shoe. And I'm not saying that they're they're lying at all. That's not what I'm saying. But for me, I just seem to have like this uh, this kind of weird thing with my feet always ending up liking different shoes to the majority of people. Um, so they've absolutely loved this shoe. And for me, this was a really massive letdown. I was really having some high hopes after all of the good reviews that it got. Um, and then when I put them on, I was just kind of massively let down. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I'm getting too... Uh, higher expectations of the shoe but yeah i was expecting something really nice and soft and it didn't really feel like that again for walking they're lovely with those massive kind of hill um clouds at the at the back uh but yeah again i struggled with the lacing system and it never felt like it had enough for me for for long runs i still felt like my, i came back with my legs aching a little bit more than they should um and it didn't have enough for me in terms of being able to use them for a session either i know um, one guy from Canterbury Endurance, he uses his um, on cloud monsters on the track. I don't know how he gets on with them, but for me, they're definitely not a track shoe. Um, and yeah, a, a stonking one hundred and fifty pounds. I think that is a it's a pretty expensive shoe for for me, uh, and I would rather invest that into my number one spot. Um, but you have to stay tuned to see what comes um, in number one. But yeah, so for me, this did get a seven point two. I use it for all of my warm ups and all of my cool downs because it is a it's a it's a comfortable shoe. I'm not going to say any of these shoes are uncomfortable. Like if I had to wear these over a pair of plimp soles, of course I would. Um, but yeah, I wear these for my warm up and cool down. So that then when I change into my racing shoes, the racing shoes always feel nicer than these. Um, and I guess that's a compliment and a bit of an insult at the same time. So yeah, sixth place, seven point two, the on cloud monster. So guys, coming in at fifth place, we have the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Sense. I think I've got that right. Um, so yeah, this is a shoe that I didn't actually anticipate me buying. More of a marathon shoe, and I've never really got close to that marathon distance. Um, but they did go into massive sales. So I think I picked these up for about £140, which is about £120 discount from their normal price for about £260. And yeah, I was really pleasantly surprised, actually. I thought it looked really clunky um, on the shelf. Um, and I didn't really see where it'd fit into my rotation, being a bit more of a marathon shoe. But it actually found its way for kind of like long runs and easy runs. And I found it just similar to like Ben is running, how he gets on. Um, he absolutely loves these for his easy runs. And I, I think I agree, to be honest. Um, I just found they really saved my legs. And also for those long runs, when I'm able to push the pace a little bit, make it seven, uh, six minute mining rather than seven minute mining. Um, they just protected the legs and I didn't feel any extra, any extra tired, like um, any extra fatigue. So yeah. Overall, a fairly comfortable shoe. I just found that the the um, the midfoot was a bit narrow for me, so I always felt like I was kind of rolling out the shoe, um, and it wasn't the most supportive with this really fabricy material. So if I was planning on doing a marathon next year, I'd probably try something like the Asics Metabee Sky or maybe the Adios Pro Threes that have just come out, um, and see how I get on with those um, before kind of falling back onto these. But yeah, as a as a shoe, they're they're a good shoe. Um, but yeah, at only picking up a 7.5 score out of 10 for a shoe that's 260 pounds. I think that's pretty disappointing. So yeah, it's only come fifth in my top 10 shoes over the last year. Guys, coming in at fourth place and just missing out on the podium is the Adidas Takumi Sen 8. 
when I first got this shoe, I was initially really disappointed. It didn't really feel like it lived up to the hype. Um, a shoe that did get a lot of hype being is it came out before the street flies. So I think I got a lot of kind of airtime uh, that maybe was a little bit unexpected. But I think with a lot of the Adidas shoes that I'm seeing online is you have to give it a few runs to let the Light Stripe Pro foam soften up. And after I let that let that kind of soften up, I actually really, really started to fall in love with this shoe. Again, it hasn't reached my top three, so there's still some shoes that I do prefer over this. Um, and it's definitely not one that I pick on race day. But I just found it kind of to be like Mr. Reliable almost. Like if I just wanted to go for a, a steady run in the woods um, on the trails, the low stack height meant I wasn't going to going to go over my ankle and the continental rubber i tell you what this is a lifesaver if there's a track session and it's been tipping it down with rain i'm a bit of a sort of person i don't like to get my shoes dirty so my nice white spikes that i've got that i would typically use for track sessions um these were a good alternative with the grip so i didn't have to get my nice white <laughs> track spikes all dirty um on the wet track so yeah the grip was really impressive for me even on like grass sessions when the grass is a bit dewy um early morning that sort of thing over summer um, they performed really well and they gave me that grip so that I wasn't feeling like I was going to go over on my ankles. And yeah, so the only downside I would say to this shoe is they are quite expensive. At, um, I think it was, 100, I want to say 160, 170 pounds. Um, but yeah, so I would probably still use these for training, but not use these um, for races because I think there's better options out there. But as a Mr. Reliable training shoe, it's definitely um, been what I was after really and it had definitely has a place in my rotation. It's not one of the shoes that gets neglected. Um, so yeah, gonna give this a 7.7 .7 out of 10. Um, and yeah, my fourth place shoe. So guys, coming in at third spot and picking up the bronze medal is the Nike Zoomex Street Fly. I'm just gonna start off by saying I love this shoe. Not enough to race in, but I love it for training. I've done some really grueling sessions in this shoe. 20 by 400, K reps, mile reps, that sort of thing. I've used this shoe for those um, and I absolutely love it. So some people found that it was too soft, um, but I'm a, I'm a sort of person, I like, I like a soft shoe. Um, and yeah, I've just got on really well with it. I know it hasn't got a carbon plate in it, but I was actually quite, ha quite happy with that. Um, and it seemed to protect the legs really well. And sometimes you expect with soft shoes, they're not as responsive, so you can't run as quick in them. I didn't find that at all. I still found that I was able to do some quick kind of 300, 400, 200 meter reps in them. Um, and still able to kind of keep up with the other boys that are maybe wearing spikes, for example. So yeah, I absolutely love this shoe. Um, and being a little bit cheaper than the um, Adidas Takumi Sen 8s, I think it was just a massive W for Nike there. Um, I think these came out £130 um, and 10 out of 10 would buy, it again, <laughs> would buy again and recommend to a friend. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give this shoe a... 8.0 um, out of 10. The only reason that I haven't kind of given it a higher, um, higher score there is because I actually don't feel confident enough to wear it on race day. And part of me feels like there's a better shoe to wear on race day, which we're going to get into in just a second. Um, and there's this one point on the shoe right about here, and it always cuts me. doesn't matter what happens. I've now got like a little bit of like a scar there um, on my foot, and it cuts me on the right right shoe. Never on the left, just on the right. Um so yeah, but as a shoe, it's a super fun shoe to use. And I mean, that's what running's about, right? To have fun. And this shoe definitely kind of takes me a bit out of my comfort zone. Um, and yeah, just absolutely enjoy, really enjoy wearing this shoe. So yeah, the Nike Zoom X Street Fly is my third place with a score of 8.0 out of 10. So guys, only one shoe can be the winner today and it's come down to two shoes. We've got the Nike Vaporfly Next Scent 2s and the Nike Zoom X Invincibles. So which one is going to take that top spot? It's going to be the Invincible. So we're going to talk about the Next Percent 2s first um, before I get into my favourite shoe. Um, so yeah, Next Percent 2s, let's talk about them. So guys, yeah, taking the silver medal position on my top 10 shoes is the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent 2s. This is my go-to racing shoe. Um, I don't use it in training all that much and I don't actually find it an overly comfortable shoe. But when it comes to performing at the highest level um, and getting to those top, top paces, I just I find you just can't fault it. I've used it for half marathons, row around my 68, um, 68 minute half marathon. I've used it for 5Ks, row around my 1440. So yeah, this shoe is just such a versatile shoe for racing. Um, I've used it for some training sessions, like when I'm wearing the shoes in, um, and they always seem to, to perform really well. Um, and they always just seem to give you that kind of safety net that something like a street fly doesn't give you. You know it's going to perform well um, and you know exactly what you're getting from this shoe because it's been out for quite a while. I think this is my third pair of them um, just because they're, that, they're kind of just such a reliable pair of shoes uh, when it comes to race day. And 
when you go to any race, the start line, all you're going to see is the bad boys with the odd Adios Pro 2 or maybe a um, an RC Elite New Balance um, on there kind of splattered about. But the majority of people are going to be wearing these. They are expensive. Um, unfortunately, that's what you've got to pay for these days. All the best shoes are expensive. But yeah, the Nike Vaporfly Next Scent 2s are my favourite shoe. Uh, my second favourite shoe. Not to get confused there. My second favourite shoe, but my favourite racing shoe um, of 2021-2022. Um, and these are definitely going to be my racing shoe going forward. Um, just a quick little tip for you guys. Nike have a really good returns policy. And these shoes do tend to kind of fall apart fairly easily. So if they are um, within their kind of 12-month warranty period, um, then be sure to try and send them back and get a, kind of get a replacement pair. Because I've had a, a few pairs in the past. Um where just like something slightly falls apart, like the, the sole slightly comes apart or something like that. And you're well within your rights to, to send those back and get a full, um, kind of a, a free exchange or a free free pair. Um, so yeah, definitely a little tip for you there, guys. But yeah, second place with a score of 8.5 out of 10. I would just say the comfort isn't kind of top notch up there, but in terms of weight um, and kind of overall speed of the shoe, it does what it needs to do. Um, and that's good enough for me, basically. So yeah, second place. The Nike Vapor Fly Next Pen 2s. So guys, yeah, that does mean that the Nike Zoom X Invincibles take the top spot. This is a bit more of an umbrella for the Invincible 1s and the Invincible 2s because I actually haven't found um, massive differences between them. But I've loved uh, both of the variations. And the 2s, actually, I mean, it's hard to compare because I haven't got a fresh pair of 1s to compare them to. But I do think the 2s feel a little bit better. They do feel a little bit more breathable. Um, and I do think the laces are slightly longer. I find it much easier to, to double knot these ones. Um, but maybe that's just because I've got the fit down better. Um, but yeah, just again, can't fault the shoe. It's the only shoe that's got into the nines out of tens. None of these shoes have got a ten out of ten, unfortunately, just because I don't think any of these shoes are perfect by any means. The one thing I would say about this shoe is it's quite hard around the edge of like the hill um, where you put your foot in. And so if I wear like shorter socks, sometimes it can rub a little bit. Um, but apart from that, I can't fault it. I absolutely love um, this shoe for my easy runs, my long runs. Um, and to be fair, I'd even do a steady run in these. Um, I don't mind getting up to kind of some slightly quicker paces in these shoes. Um, but yeah, this, this shoe has basically done pretty much all of my winter mileage for me. All of those easy runs, those long runs. Um, and it's really helped to protect those legs. Obviously, I haven't had um, any bad injuries for probably over a year now. Um, and I do actually think this is partly down to this shoe. Um, it protects my legs really, really nicely. It's like running on a massive wad of marshmallow. And that's going to feel nice, isn't it? So yeah, I love this shoe. Um, it's obviously a little bit on the pricey side, I guess. That's why the score isn't as high as you'd expect. Um, but yeah, this shoe, this, this shoe does score a 9.0 out of 10. So I'm um, really excited to see if I ever get a, if I get a 10 out of 10 um, some point down the line. Um, but yeah, this is my favourite shoe of 21, uh, 2021 and 2022. The Nike Zoom X Invincible 1s and the Nike Zoom X Invincible 2s. I absolutely love this shoe. So yeah, if I was going to recommend you should uh, try any of these shoes, it would be these ones. And obviously I'm not sponsored um, or gifted any of these shoes that you've seen before. Um, I think I did actually get sent the on ones. Um, and as you can 10th, 9th, 8th, <laughs> they came 6th. Um, so there's been no buys here at all. Um, but yeah, the Nike Zoom X Invincible 2s. My favourite shoe that I've used over the last 12 months. So guys, that is it. My top 10 shoes that I've used over the last 12 months. I have used some other shoes, but they haven't even made it into the top 10s. So that's why I haven't mentioned them. Um, things like the Clifton 7s, um, the Peg 36s I used a little bit of. Um, I'm trying to think if I use anything else. Nothing's coming to mind. Um, like the Nike Epic React. Um, didn't really enjoy those. Um, so old pair of Ultra Boosts. They're just they're not the same anymore. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this kind of slightly different style of video. I hadn't really made like a shoe a shoe video into it in kind of in a while. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. Please like, subscribe, and don't forget to drop me down in the comments what your favourite shoe um over the last twelve months has been uh, and see how it compares to mine. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll be able to try some really cool shoes in the future. Obviously, budget is limiting. I'm a student. Um, I don't have a full-time job or anything like that. So I try my best. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Please like, subscribe and share with your running buddies. It's free for you and it means a lot to me. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.